Not so long ago, Perth's live music industry was thriving, with gigs on offer most nights of the week. Now the gigs are fewer and live music venues are getting harder to come by. But as Irina Serenik reports, the hotel industry is fighting back. In the heart of the inner city suburb of North Perth lies one of the city's live music survivors, the Rosemount Hotel. The atmosphere is definitely one of everybody is going to come here and have a good time. Venues like this are a dying breed. The Rosemount is one of the few remaining suburban pubs that host local and original musicians. There's dozens of really good bands out there, but less venues. Perth has got this sort of reputation as, as being the sleepy town or where nothing's on, so I think if you have more venues with live music, it's, you know, it's a bit more buzz around it. There are 27 fewer live music venues in Perth now than there were eight years ago. That's a drop of around 20%. Last year saw the closure of two of the city's most popular, DeVille's and The Bakery, which could fit around 600 people. You've got bands like Tame Impala, etc., that are bringing a focus to Perth, and I honestly don't know that Perth's ready for that attention. There's not the infrastructure there, there's not enough venues that seem to want to put out you know, live original bands on a regular basis to build that scene. Tame Impala is one of a long list of West Australian bands which have found international fame. This year they scored a nomination for one of music's highest accolades, a Grammy Award. They come from reasonably humble straits like the rest of us do, playing in small venues, coming out of Fremantle, to this amazingly powerful position internationally as one of the great bands. And I think that's a great example of what you can do if you have a strong scene where bands can get a gig. Mike Harris heads up the music industry's peak body in WA. He says without the venues, Perth can't foster talent. If there was enough venues for people to progress their careers and play in bigger venues and bigger venues, then more bands, the young, younger bands, the emerging bands, would be able to come in and play those 100 to 150 capacity venues, which therein lies a problem because the bands that should probably should have moved on are still in those venues for lack of somewhere else to play. Perth has a rich live music history. In the 80s and 90s, punters were able to see a live band play at a number of venues most nights of the week. But over the years, live music has been a casualty of urban infill. Complaints from residents have seen pubs like Steve's in Midlands abandon live entertainment. The important thing was that it wasn't the, the sound of music coming from the premises. It was the people that came to and as they went back to their cars, if they threw rubbish onto the ground, if they tipped a bin over or whatever, that was where the complaints were. Other pubs such as the Grosvenor in Perth stopped playing live music due to noise complaints. To allow new residents to move in next door and then expect those venues to be restricted or shut down is just wrong. And what happens is the broader community miss out on those live entertainment venues. Bradley Wood says WA's liquor licensing laws make it difficult for new venues to open when others close. It can take up to a year to cut through the red tape. And it's all because of really overt nanny state restrictions. The Australian Hotels Association wants WA to bring in laws which protect live music venues from noise complaints similar to those recently introduced in Victoria. The laws put the onus on residential developers to pay for soundproofing if they build close to an existing venue. Some councils, including the cities of Perth, Vincent and Fremantle, have already introduced their own policies based on the same principle. But soundproofing only goes so far. All the sound attenuation in the world will stop the music coming out of the space, but at midnight or one o'clock, when 400, 500, all very happy punters walk out of the, the room as well, there's going to be noise. Noise restrictions and red tape aren't the only factors limiting Perth's live music scene. 
Mike Harris believes gentrification has also had a role to play. In some ways, I think sound is manageable. Gentrification, very little we can do about that. How you deal with the fact that people moving into those suburbs may have little or no interest in live music, they're not the traditional fans or supporters of live music. How you deal with that um, change in attitude, change in what people want in their immediate proximity is a more difficult issue. Some musicians themselves concede the economics have changed. I think um, that there's probably were more people going out 10 years ago to actually see bands. Um, you know, what we've worked out is that, you know, tonight there's been four bands playing, four people in those bands, so to pay all those people costs a lot more than putting on a DJ. What most agree on is that live music is worth saving. Industry representatives will meet with government departments, including liquor licensing and planning, to discuss how to preserve Perth's live music scene. The thing about live performance is that it's different from anything else. Um, be it a band, be it a concert, be it a theatre piece, um, you're never going to see that event again. That happens once only for the people in that room. Thank you. Irina Serenik with that story from Perth. And that's the program for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching. You can see any of our stories again either on iview or on our website. I'm Simon Royal in Adelaide. Join us next week for more Australia Wide.